we have uh, recycling problems. Uh, uh, we have a uh, huge energy cost in making this equipment that we then uh, throw away. Uh, we have big environmental problems. Uh, uh, much of this equipment is made with planned obsolescence. You just expect the people very shortly to throw it away. Uh, you design it to dispose it, dispose of it. You don't design it so that it can be repaired or uh, uh, upgraded. And we behave as if resources are unlimited, like there's unlimited amount of energy. This morning, I uh, noted that in every one of the papers I looked at in our Hill uh, newspapers, that uh, the major headline on the front page of every one of them had to deal with energy and the high cost of gasoline. Everybody is being blamed, and the person that really to, to, to blame for this is the millions of us who are out there riding around in our SUVs. The supply just is greater than the demand. It's a simple supply-demand problem, which is why the price of gasoline is up. I said this was a self-inflicted problem, and it really is. Much of the equipment that, this electronic equipment that is sold is bought with discretionary money. You just don't need it. And we have to trade off in our society today. What is more important? To spend more time with these silly games or to use less energy so there'll be more of it available for our kids and our grandkids. And yet we have a huge beast to feed out there. We have this huge industry that's making this stuff. And if, they, and if you aren't buying it and throwing it away, they aren't making it. How do we resolve this problem? What do we do? I have 10 kids, 16 grandkids, and two great-grandkids. We're handing them a huge debt, not with my vote, if you look at my voting record. Wouldn't it be nice if we left them a little energy? I'm having a big problem with a society that just wants to consume profligate spending, just play, play, play with no thought for tomorrow, no thought for your kids, no thought for your grandkids. And here we are today talking about a problem which is almost totally self-inflicted. You know, if you want to, if people need to work, why can't they work rebuilding this equipment and repairing it rather than just throwing it away? There's no reason, for instance, that the frame, we don't have frames on cars anymore. When we used to have a frame, no reason that that wouldn't last a hundred years. Why does that to go to the junkyard in 16 or 18 years? You know, these things are not limitless. There is a limit to the amount of energy that's out there. There is a limit to the amount of, 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 of these metals and so forth that are out there. There is a limit to the capacity of the environment to absorb all of these things. How do we reach a balance in this so that we aren't looking just to the next election, pandering to people so we'll get elected, so that we aren't looking just to the next quarterly report so that it'll look good, so that your stockholders will feel good about you and invest even more money in you. How do we strike a balance that looks long-term to the future? I could start a response. Um, I, I think I, I agree with everything you said. And I think that the, the strategy of trying to bring in a producer responsibility approach into the U.S and really importing that policy initiative from Europe and elsewhere is at least a part of the solution. Because what that does is to internalize the cost of production into the full life cycle of the product. And if the producers have to be responsible for those costs throughout the entire life cycle, they're going to tell their designers, you know, let's figure out a way to make these products last longer, uh, be more efficient, and be less expensive throughout the life cycle. So the point is that if they have to pay for the cost of recycling and disposal, we think that that's going to send some important design signals up to the front end where it really belongs. It will help shift that focus. It's probably not going to solve all the questions that you're raising, because I do think that the rapid obsolescence is the major thing. You probably know of, of Moore's Law, which was based on um, Gordon Moore, one of the founders of the semiconductor industry. If you look at the slope of, of change in the industry, it looks like this. It's a logarithmic scale going straight up to the sky. When you look at the slope of the environmental and social improvements that we have, it's a much shallower slope like this. I think our, jo our job is to try to figure out how to make those slopes be coincidental. Um, and right now, we're way out of whack on that, in my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Williams.